Warning, the show may contain some crude humor and mild swearing. Listener discretion is advised. This show is produced by Geek Happy Network, constantly curious about the things we love. If you enjoyed listening to Smorgasbord, remember to subscribe to the show on Spotify, YouTube, or on your favorite podcast app. Remember to leave a review. We would love to hear your thoughts. This This is Smorgasbord! Welcome to Smorgasbord, a show where we explore the rituals, myths, and all things strange about the world of food. I'm Mick, and here's my co-host, Angel. And today, we are talking about dead sharks. Yay! That's it. It's just... Episode um, over. You know what I'm picturing? The what? left shark from the Katy Perry thing? Oh. <laughs> but she was I don't even remember what performance this was but she had those sharks shark yeah, right. backup dancers that's right yeah we're gonna kill those bitches and eat them yes, can I say bitches will. yeah sure oh, okay <laughs> yeah we're gonna kill them and eat them worst, worst things have been said this week so why not that's relatively tame yeah well what, what have you been eating to, this week this week I just came back from Indian food Ooh. Uh, you know how things are kind of open. Yes. So actually, no, the more interesting story is um, the last restaurant I ate at before the shutdown was Denny's for my birthday. Nice. And the first one, the first restaurant that I went to after everything opened was Denny's for Heck my yeah. mom's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> just runs so, in the family at this point. Uh, it yes. Like. We just want our free Grand Slams. Nice. Enough. But not really, because my mom's a vegetarian. She's just like, if I go and get a Grand Slam, you can eat it, and then you can order a vegetarian omelet for me. Ah. <laughs> we'll just swap. I'm like, okay. Nice. Frugal Sounds like a good life. deal. Yeah. <laughs> but here's yeah. a fun fact. What? Uh, if you don't order a Grand Slam, they will just take the price of the Grand Slam off your bill. Oh, really? Yeah. So you could, you could order whatever then. You can or... order whatever, yeah. Oh, that's nice of them. Yeah, so you, pro Denny's. tip, yeah. <laughs> pro tip, y'all pro should t- be going to, to Denny's, Yeah, but you do have to show ID with your actual birthday. Oh, that might be hard. <laughs> oh, yours is gone. Yours was in the height, <laughs> height yeah. of things. Yeah, way past. Yeah, I had Indian yesterday, actually, too. It was really yeah, good. Yeah, I have well, Indian missed food. Indian food. Yeah. So good. Yeah, I think I ate too much. It was too spicy. I regretted some of it this morning, but it's fine. But today we're talking about fermented shark or hakarl. It's from Iceland, and, and I don't it's know how definitely to not Icelandic served words. at. It's not served at Denny's or any no. Indian restaurants. <laughs> it's neither Indian nor Denny's, but <laughs> it is food, and there it is an animal. And it is Icelandic. It's Icelandic, yeah. Which is very hard to pronounce. I understand. Yeah, it's like H A with an uh, accent. K A R L. Hakarl? 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 I don't know. Hakarl. I actually have a friend that's majored in Icelandic. Oh. He can probably say it. Should he tried to say it. He could uh, pronounce the name of that volcano that no one could pronounce. Ah, so yes. I, <laughs> I don't even know what it is, but I don't even want to look. To I don't know. It. it was like 12 <laughs> syllables long. So I don't oh, jeez. Pass. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one's two. Which is nice. Hakarl. I'm going to try to... Mm. S- hopefully it's Hakarl. Or fermented shark. If you don't know much about Iceland, it's located in the North Atlantic Ocean between Greenland and Norway. It's known as the land of ice and fire because the country has a lot of glacial and volcanic activity. So it's cold and hot. I'm pretty sure Game of Thrones was far- partially filmed there. Probably, yeah. I mean, Katy Perry probably got the idea of the sharks from here. Oh yeah, cold. she is that she sang that song, right? I don't know. I just know she <laughs> sang some songs. <laughs> you're hot, or you're cold, you're in, or you're out. I don't know. I, I, I was, yeah, you know I'm a T Swift fan. Yeah. I can't be a Katy Perry fan. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. I am neither, so I don't know. Hi there. My name is Kanyeki Kamawe, and I'm the host of the Represented Podcast. No matter who you are and no matter where you come from, we each have a story to tell. The Represented Podcast explores individuals' life stories with the hope that we can identify with or learn from them. 
Subscribe and listen to the show on YouTube, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, or even Spotify. You can also check us out on the Geek Happy Network website. That's geekhappynetwork.com. Finally, follow the show on Instagram at Represented Podcast to keep up with the fun stuff. Love to see you there. Peace. But anyway, yeah, so they're full of glacials and volcanic activity. So you, there's a lot of sand and lava, mountains, glaciers, and also hot springs. Hmm. It's a member of the Scandinavian Union and with a population of only 350,000 people, which is kind of small, I guess, for us North Americaners. Their native language. I mean, language. It's, a, it's a lot of land, but I don't know how much of it you can comfortably live in. Yeah. Because they're so north. Yeah, exactly. But it is quite a, a nice place. I mean, it is sand and lava fields, but it is. it means also that there's a lot of land that grows really well because of the volcanic soil, I guess. They're also known as one of the best countries to be a woman because of equality. They're one of the first countries in the world to vote a female president in for, nice. in 1980. Mm-hmm. Uh, her name is Vigdis Finnbogatir. <laughs> Daughter. Daughter. Something, something's daughter. Finboga a... daughter. Yeah. They're also known for their sustainable energy, mostly using the nature around them to power the country. Uh, I guess it's kind of easy when you have a lot of geothermal energy around you. Also, we have some quick Icelandic Iceland facts. I guess that's redundant. Iceland facts. Facts. I really want to go there. Yeah, me too. It's beautiful. Uh, it sounds super beautiful. The it sounds reason. super beautiful. Have you not yeah. seen the pictures? You know what movie you should watch? It's the uh, uh, Walter Mitty with oh, uh, Ben Stiller. Movie, a yeah. lot of that was in Iceland. And it oh, was cool. gorgeous. Yeah. Okay. That makes me really want to go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Another reason is because apparently the largest banana plantation in maybe the world, but at least in Europe. <laughs> they have lots of bananas. They can grow bananas in that climate. They can't in the climate, but because of all their geo energy stuff oh, and their do they ha- focus do they- on like fresh food, they've been able to make really like a geothermal hothouse. Essentially, yeah, like a greenhouse. That's so sorts. cool. Yeah. Do they also uh, grow sharks? <laughs> <laughs> I think the sharks just grow themselves there. No, oh, okay. And their capital of Reykjavik. 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 Yeah. Which means Smoky Bay. It's also known. It's all. It's known as Smoky Bay because of the amount of hot springs there. They also also apparently pride themselves as having no big insects or mosquitoes, unlike Australia. And mm-hmm. I found this really interesting. They have a naming committee in Iceland. Naming committee. Yeah, they what? approve what names to give people in order to adhere to tradition. But from what I understand, also to avoid embarrassment, so you don't accidentally call your kid boy fucker or something. <laughs> That would be unfortunate. So yeah. good thing uh, Elon Musk and Grimes didn't give birth in Iceland. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it <laughs> would have been approved. <laughs> no, it definitely not have been approved. Yeah. Another interesting thing about them is with their last names, rather than having the same last names, depending on how you were born, if you were a male, you'd be your last name would end with a son after. So you take on your father's name and then add a son in the end. Or if you're female, you'd add daughter. Like so your mom's guess, mom's yeah. last name. So my last name should have been Yay Daughter. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Yay yo. <laughs> I'd be Tony Son. <laughs> yeah. They also have no army or and the police there don't carry firearms. There's also only been one McDonald's there that's no longer there. And the only army base was brought to you by the United States for a certain while. Because nothing speaks more like putting an army somewhere than American. America. I said Fuck that earlier, no. But yeah. Uh, they also have a penis museum. <laughs> oh yes, I heard about this. I don't know That's from, cool, from where or from whom, but yeah. But I have heard of this. <laughs> I would like to know what about the penis they made a museum about? Like, I think it just it's just like carvings and like or no, is it a it's a science it's... museum. Is it just like here are all the penises of our leaders that <laughs> were men? <laughs> we castrate them after yeah. post mortem. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like this is the Icelandic national hockey team's penis <laughs> collection. 
We cut well, them you off know, after they didn't win gold. <laughs> there's something that I think is in Iceland. I'm not sure. I have to check on this. But Necropants. Necropants? Is a, is in a, a museum in one of the Scandinavian oh, countries. Interesting. It's, a, they, it's literally a pair of pants made of someone's lower half skin. Ew. <laughs> Like people, it's made of people leg, right? Has has all the parts still attached? It's just skinned, so it's like people leather. Oh, well then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In would... case you ever wanted to wear people pants, they're called uh, necro pants. <laughs> yeah, definitely been my dream, I guess, since I was thirty-five. <laughs> So not yet. <laughs> not yet a dream of mine. Not yet. Watch, you hit 35, you're going to be like, I'm going to get my necro pants. Yeah, I'm going to go cut my bottom half, replace it for a better half, but still wear my current half. And lastly, they're also, apparently the word geyser comes from the massive geyser in Iceland called geyser. So the word itself. We just butchered it. the pronunciation and decided to make it official. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, cool. But as just we think, are a food think podcast. About, think about food. We will think about food, exactly. <laughs> and Icelandic cuisine is actually kind of fascinating. Um, it's a piece of land surrounded by the Atlantic Ocean, so it should come to no surprise that the most popular kind of food in Iceland is... What do you think? Fermented stuff. <laughs> actually, yeah. Well, traditionally, yeah. But also seafood is one of the most common oh. kinds of food. <laughs> like fermentation. <laughs> um, given the fact that they have made such progress in technology, like being able to grow bananas, it's also no surprise that they have a, a pretty modern cuisine that uses a lot of fresh food from different, or uses a lot of different kinds of food that are very fresh. Historically, Icelandic cuisine is rooted in the Viking culture. And so aside from... Seafood, lamb, dairy, potatoes, and bread making being historical Icelandic food. They also have a lot of fish, like cod and herring, that's common. And given that, I guess, Viking culture revolves around survival, their food styles revolve around preservation and longevity. So fermentation, pickling, drying, or smoking practices are common food styles when it, you look at traditional Icelandic food. Today, though, food in Iceland is focused on quality, taking in the very fresh ingredients that they have around the country. Yeah, I, I bet also, that place is fresh AF. Yeah, they don't <laughs> use a lot of GMOs, or I don't think they use any GMOs generally with their food there, which is probably why McDonald's didn't last that long. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you are used to eating such fresh, such good stuff, yeah. no one's going to want to go to McDonald's. No, not they might at all. they might go as a joke, but you know. yeah, they probably try to be like, we're so intelligent that we want to understand other people's cultures. And then they take one bite of a nugget and they're like, "What is this?" I think I'm what? going back to bigotry. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you don't get a lot of GMOs, or artificial food. Um, also, given that it's a volcanic area, their soil is most likely very rich in nutrients and minerals. Some common Icelandic dishes or food types is lamb. It's a, probably the most common form of land meat as they are plentiful. Um, given the abundance of plants and berries as well, let's say we could say that this lamb that they eat is pretty flavored and well tasty. I'm on the fence about lamb. I think because the first time I ate it, I was tricked into eating it. And really? I was told it was beef. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> and then I was just like, this is not beef. The texture is a little different. Yeah, and I don't know if it's just like I grew to resent it because right. I was lied to <laughs> or if I actually don't like it. Yeah, I mean, the texture of lamb is pretty different from beef. Or so. Yeah. If you're not used to it, then you would, might not like it. Even the flavor, actually. The flavor is very, I was going to say off, but it's it's more just different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It feels off to me, but that's subjective. Okay. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Uh, lamb there is cooked in different ways, so they could stew it with vegetables, or you could have it as roasted sirloin. Kodstupa is lamb meat soup with herbs like oregano and thyme, and vegetables like potatoes and carrots. Um, like we mentioned, seafood is a pretty popular meal because 
there's a lot of seafood around the country, given that they're pretty much in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> uh, no, there's like, not much there. <laughs> no, it's it's really just a big island or collection of islands in the middle of the Atlantic. Like lamb, you could cook it in different ways as well. Fish and chips can be common there. Also, hago fishkur, which is fish jerky. Again, going back to traditional food of, you know, jerking or preserving the meat. Wait, that sounds good. But I yeah. think I just like food in jerky form. <laughs> like any any food. <laughs> yeah. I feel you there. I mean, my, my on the way home from set food was all used to be beef jerky. Oh, so good. Yeah. Um, lobster is also common. Also, eating whales and puffins can be a thing in Iceland. Or is a thing in Iceland. I hear puffins are just like fishy chicken. So. Yeah. They're cute. I would try one. But then feel bad about it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what's that? The Star Wars movie with the porgy things. They look so cute. But also, not gonna lie, kind of tasty. Hmm. Yeah. Y- yeah. Just don't look at <laughs> one in the eye as you eat it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I would hope that the eyes are no longer there. Yeah. As I'm eating it. <laughs> Um, In the capital city of... Okay, how do I pronounce this again? (laughs) Reykjavik. 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 The J is like a Y. I see. That makes (laughs) sense now. (laughs) (laughs) Um, In the capital city of Reykjavik, the popular dish there could be pilsir or hot dogs. Is this a Scandinavian thing? Hot dogs? Hot dogs. I mean, I feel like hot dogs are just kind of a popular object (laughs) everywhere (laughs) yeah fair enough yeah i mean it's easy right you just grind up some shit yeah put it in a readily made sack yeah you can easily transport it easily you can just eat it without forks yeah (laughs) that's true yeah yeah so hot dogs is popular here in iceland as well just like i guess in sweden like when you get 99 cent ikea hot dogs Oh but man, that was my sustenance in- for a very long time. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> it's great. Exactly. Um, but apparently, unlike 99 cent IKEA hot dogs, hot dogs in Reykjavik are pretty expensive. They're about $7 ish per dog. Um, you eat it with a bun, just like most hot dogs are eaten. Um, you could add some onions, fried onions, raw onions, mustard, and remoulade, which is, I guess, another mustard based sauce. I thought you said marmalade. Mm. Could be good too. Well, that but, could be good. Yeah. They have berries in Iceland. I think. I'm yeah. not sure what kind of fruit they're capable of growing. I, I mean, if they could grow bananas, they could probably grow anything. Oh, there. that's right. Yeah. I keep forgetting about the, the geothermal It's really stuff. weird that they just, they're like the largest supplier, producer of bananas. Yeah. Huh. Also, why bananas? Because they're good. They're yeah. banana shaped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this might have to be like a whole episode in itself. Uh, Find out that they're just obsessed with bananas. And... Actually, I don't know if they are because I don't... Like when we look at just Icelandic well. cuisine, there's just no bananas dishes. But anyway. Well, I don't think... I mean, that's got to be a more recent thing, right? Yeah. Or have they been recent. geothermoing bananas for a really long time? <laughs> <laughs> They've had greenhouses and power plants since the Viking period. Oh, yes. Another popular dish is skir, which is essentially a dairy product that's kind of somewhere in between yogurt and cottage cheese. So I think you might like this dish. Ooh, that does sound good. And then you eat it with cream and berry jam. Mm. Yum. Ice cream is apparently popular in Iceland, despite it being pretty cold there, which I totally get because I do I like a good cold, ice cream in the winter. Same. Like the only thing I tend to crave when it's cold is ice cream. I actually don't like ice cream in the summertime because it melts too quickly and it gets sticky. Super (laughs) sticky. Yeah, exactly. Like Um, in the summertime, the last thing I want is anything sticky. Yep. Because ants. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And just like the feeling of sticky. Yeah, Yeah, it's awful. Yeah. Um, Another really cool thing in Iceland is their bread, specifically rye bread, which apparently is a very staple thing they have in meals. What's really cool about the way they make, or what's really cool about the rye bread in Iceland is how they make it. Is it so flat? On, uh, yeah, but they don't cook it in ovens. Oh. Do they, they geothermal cook it? Yeah, actually. Oh. They bury and me. bake I'm it a in a geyser. 
Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, for like hours or something. So like the that's bread taking, comes out super soft. That's taking bread making to a next level. Yeah. Like I could just picture now like a, what do you call it? A Reuben with like lamb meat instead too. With mm. geyser bread. Geyser bread. Geyser Reuben. Yeah. Please tell me they have like a bread brand called geyser bread that's so cool <laughs> probably maybe i don't even like bread and i will eat a geyser bread yeah they said it's super soft so the texture you might actually like the texture of it we'll see um, about that yeah uh and lastly there's also their national liquor which is brennivin which is essentially just i've schnapps. had brennivin what does it taste like it translates it's also uh i see from what I remember, that. from what I remember, right, um, you can get it at a liquor store in Olympic Village. Oh, cool! Good to, <laughs> oh, the Legacy, right? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, it's also known as Svar Svartidawi, which just translates <laughs> to Black Death, <laughs> which is essentially yeah. how I feel today. But you know, ah, yeah. I should probably cool. drink some of this. Yeah, <laughs> go sh get yourself some Brennivin. It sounds good. So I might. Go it sounds like it. something you need to drink when you're listening to death metal. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean it is called Black Death, so or black metal. But also, like every country, they have some of their traditional foods still in existence. So some of them are svio, which is boiled sheep's head. Mm. Hertzsprunger. Which is ram's testicles pressed and boiled so it looks like cold cut meat. Mm -hmm. They have a thing about penises. <laughs> mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> like they, they, the penis they live on a little island like, with nothing else better to do. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> but what we find most fascinating of all from their traditional food is hakarl, which is fermented shark carcass. And yes, it is a whole shark that they ferment here. Wow, how so, big is the jar that they put the big. shark in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so often the shark used for Hakarl is a Greenland shark. And they don't actually put it in jars. I guess modern way, modern styles of making Hakarl now puts them in bigger containers. But well, back in the day and how to make it, they instead of putting it in jars, they would just bury these sharks, which we'll go into in more detail later. Um, but yeah, they use Greenland sharks or sleeper sharks for Hakarl. Uh, they're known as sleeper sharks because they're slow, non-aggressive. They don't really do much, and apparently they're partially blind. <laughs> oh. so it's just kind of useless oh, animal. Like evolutionarily, something they took a lazy turn. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, they're also one of the older sharks, so they just didn't really. I guess they're just the old sharks that didn't evolve. <laughs> oh, but it's surprising uh, that they lasted even though they didn't really evolve yeah they just chill at the ocean nobody fucks with them <laughs> like well you know pan pandas are pretty useless yeah i guess they're <laughs> the pandas of the sea they are pandas of the sea <laughs> don't quote us on that but that's what we're going with um, evolutionarily completely useless yeah <laughs> just chill <laughs> But yeah, the dish hakarl goes all the way back to traditional Icelandic cuisine, which was again about preservation and finding ways to eat whatever was available to them. But what's interesting about all of this is that Greenland sharks or sleeper sharks are pretty inedible. A big reason for it is because they're kind of toxic. And I don't <laughs> mean like people, but <laughs> like not emotionally toxic. Yeah. Um, given that their existence is so old, their biological construct is rather archaic as well. Aside from being partially blind, their digestive system is super archaic. Now, when it comes to archaic digestive systems, what do you think that would mean? Is it very slow? I don't know. I don't really know what that means. <laughs> this do means they fart a lot? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, I hope not. <laughs> because having archaic digestive system, one of it tends to mean that they don't have a urinary system. Oh, weird. Yeah. They don't pee? They do. It just doesn't come out. Go. <laughs> so they... But wouldn't you just get bigger and bigger? <laughs> Until your it... giant balloon 
fill the pee and then you just explode and die (laughs) well i guess they have other ways of excreting their liquids right so they probably burp it out or they have holes or other ways to come out but the idea of their like the new the substances of pee that get excreted out it doesn't happen with these sharks they essentially pee themselves or pee in themselves because the pee just goes straight into their bloodstream which means that their blood then becomes rather poisonous because it a lot of the excrements like urea or trimethylene oxide just go back to their body. Now, these aren't necessarily deadly poisons for humans, but they are kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> but I'm assuming because of the abundance of these sharks in Iceland, they just found a way to eat them. Um, and how they go about doing that is a multi-step process that requires quite a lot of waiting. So like we mentioned, they didn't put them in jars because these sharks are massive AF. So to make Hakarl, first you got to obviously hunt down and find the shark. And then you have to kill it. Um, And then once you do that, you could gut the shark and behead it. And then you kind of bury the shark in a shallow hole for a few weeks. Sometimes as long as 12 weeks, depending on the season. The shark cavity faces down on the ground so that, um, I guess, the toxins get pressed down into the ground instead. And then you cover the shark itself with sand, gravel, and stones. This gives weight to the shark and kind of squeezes the toxins out of the shark. <laughs> so the pee leaks out. <laughs> yeah, you, they can't pee themselves, but you could kill them and make them pee. Oh, right. That's exactly <laughs> what I wanted. <laughs> Yeah, so that would be the curing period. I'm guessing, like, the colder or wetter seasons make it harder for it to squeeze the, the pee out or the toxins out. So that's why it lasts. Or when it just freeze? Weeks. Yeah, exactly. So that's why sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Back in the day, apparently, the sharks were also soaked in urine before placed underground to allow them but to But why? Ferment They're a already bit. filled with pee. Why I don't would you know. add more pee to it? This is virgin boy eggs all over again. <laughs> Should just turn our podcast into the pee cast. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming it's just a way to help ferment the shark because they don't really have, I guess, fermenting abilities in itself. Right. Or just even help it accelerate the fermentation the process. Um, nowadays, though, they just use non urine ingredients and vinegar. <laughs> Which is also, kind of gross. it smells kind of like pee. <laughs> Vinegar yeah, does. it does. Um, then after a few weeks, you dig up the shark, you cut it into smaller strips, and then you hang the shark to age it up. This aging process takes about four to five months. And it'll dry the shark up and give it this brown, crusty outer layer. Talk about not, like, instant gratification. It's like, yeah. I'm hungry. Well, the, your shark will be ready in five months. Yeah, it's, it <laughs> takes a long time. And it's not like these things smell good, right? Like we mentioned, they pee themselves. <laughs> so there's a strong smell of ammonia when it comes to these sharks. Mm-mm. After the drying period is done, the brown layer is a, the brown layer is eventually cut off. And then these shark strips are cut into small bite-sized cubes, which are then packaged and ready to serve. This would be the traditional way of making it. Uh, modern day creation of this hakarl dish doesn't require sharks to be dug under dirt. Rather, you press them in large containers with holes in the bottom. So then you just kind of squeeze all the liquids out of it. But the drying and packaging process is still kind of similar. Yeah. Yeah, this doesn't sound appetizing. One no, bit. but you know, you have to eat it if you go visit Iceland, right? Yeah, it seems like it's one of those. You gotta try it. <laughs> um, hakar itself comes in two different forms. There is Galer Hakar, which is chewy and red. And this one comes from the shark's belly. Glare Hakar just translates to glassy shark. Glassy. Um, yeah, maybe that's, I guess, maybe that's how it tastes or feels to your mouth. Because it's chewy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other version is Skir Hakarl which is soft and white, and this comes from the shark's internal body itself. Skirlakarl literally translates to skir shark, skir, skir shark. And as we could remember from earlier, skir is that yogurt cottage cheese-like dish. 
I'm assuming they call it this because of its visual similarities and its texture, because apparently the Skilha Carl is more cheese-like in texture rather than chewy. And cheese -like. it's white in color. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you eat Hakarl? Well, they come in little cubes, so usually it's served with a toothpick and you just bite it and eat it. Um, it is highly recommended to take a shot of Brennivin after. <laughs> and before. Yeah, I, I think it comes, it's so recommended that it just comes hand in hand. <laughs> toothpick, I mean, shot glass. Yes, just do it. Just do it. Don't question it. Yeah. <laughs> When it comes to when you eat hakarl, you could kind of just eat it any time. It's generally available for anybody who wants to eat it. It's more considered a delicacy now than just a staple meal for people. But one common time you might want to eat it, since it is a traditional dish, is during Porgabolt or Thorgabolt, which is the midwinter festival in Iceland. Mm, I, I, I would assume that people are just like in the middle of depression seasonal affective disorder yeah. at that time <laughs> just like, reason please lighten the mood for us here's exactly. some shark and then they're like oh no <laughs> <laughs> it's like who brought this damn shark dish into this party just trying to have fun man um Thor thorable as it, the name suggests is a festival that might be to celebrate pagan gods as they are descendant of the vikings icelandic tradition is this might be named after the Norse god Thor, who's Aww. the god of thunder. Possibly. Another possible naming that they got this from is from the Norwegian king Thori Snarson. Or another possible reason it's called Thorobolt is the celebration does happen in the month of Thori in the Icelandic calendar, which is you a know lunar what the, calendar. You know what the... The Canadian with a lisp says? What? Thorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry about that joke. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was funny. <laughs> Continue. Like, I don't know if I want to keep going anymore. <laughs> um, I have finally done it. Yep. I done it. I have killed Mick's spirit. So dead. I delivered the final blow. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But anyway, <laughs> the uh, festival itself, Thorobald, was actually canceled, or it was practiced back in the day, but then in the 10th century, when Iceland was Christianized, it was abolished and then brought back again in the 19th century. Not as a pagan festival, but just as a midwinter festival. Which I think they just brought it back, like you probably suggested, which is they just got bored and they were needed a reason to celebrate through the cold. The name Thora itself is seems to be a reference to the month, like we said, which translates to frost, and bolt means sacrifice. Hmm? And Thora bolt. So yeah, like most histories of things that are happening with festivals, we have no idea and it's kind of controversial. <laughs> But whatever the history today, it's just a celebration to eat, drink, and be merry. The food served in the festival tends to be more traditional Icelandic food, which is why you'll probably see how Carl served here. And as it is to drink and be merry, you will have Brennivin in a plenty. Oh, Brennivin! Yeah. Uh, yeah. Svea will also probably be served during these time, this festival, which is the ram's head thing, sheep's head. Um, after eating, the merriment will continue which will then include music games and storytelling um, back then it seemed to be the storytelling would be like stories about the pagan gods and stuff i think now it's more like just art it's just art yeah. i like that yeah it seems pretty chill like this the uh, one thing that came out researching about iceland is they just seem super chill <laughs> <laughs> i know i just i, like I want to go and hang out yeah Especially what's been happening the past few months or weeks. It would just be nice to chill. <laughs> it would be. Um, other foods served during the Porobolt would be... Um, I don't know. Sorry, my brain farted. I'm just going to cancel that. <laughs> anyway, as we do in every episode, we ask the two big questions. Is it healthy or is it good? Um mm. 
when it comes to being healthy, I have no idea. It doesn't seem to be not healthy. Um, Except for the I'd, pee pee part. But yeah. That's what the burying it is for. <laughs> yeah. I'd say it falls in like the neutral ground of things. It is a source of sustenance, but also it's not like. vegetables <laughs> <laughs> it's protein yeah um but it, it is probably not good for people with gout as the ammonia smell that you get from this dish is most likely caused by uric acid which right. is a primary source of gout so i guess when we ask is it healthy for me it's terribly <laughs> not <laughs> it will ruin me you will this is how it, i thought i delivered the killing blow but no <laughs> the fermented shark will yep. um when it comes to is it good apparently eh, it's no <laughs> no i don't even know how you but would make that taste not gross some not people good. some locals tend to say it could be good um it's definitely one of those acquired tastes um if people, some people say that if you like strong cheeses, like blue cheese and stuff. I do like strong cheeses. You might actually find this to be tasty. Huh. Huh. Wow. <laughs> I'm down to try it once. Yeah. You know, you know me. Yeah. Um, but on the flip side of it, Anthony Bourdain did say it is the single worst, most disgusting, terrible tasting thing he's ever tried. <laughs> I trust that man's palate. So, yeah. Uh, um, it's also tough said that choice. They, yeah. I think I've seen an Anthony Bourdain episode where he goes to Iceland, but he went in the middle of winter, so like nobody had fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember if he ate the thing. Yeah. The shark. I'm sure after a bottle yeah. of Brennan, he didn't remember either. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but apparently the aftertaste tastes like urine, so I'm going to say it doesn't taste good. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't, mm. I'm super hard pass on that. Yeah. But not that hard, because I will still try it, <laughs> just yeah. to try it. Yeah, I'd say compared to some of the stuff we covered of the recent episodes, this isn't the worst. Yeah, I, I would try this over virgin boy eggs for yeah. real. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> But yeah, that's um, Hakarl. Mm -hmm. That's the Left episode. shark. Yeah, we will die in exhaustion and shark death. Hoo ha ha. <laughs> 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 shark death. Hoo ha ha. Oh, I like sharks. They're cute. They are. Especially the Nemo sharks. I like them. Oh, Bruce. Was his name Bruce? That's Bruce? Yeah. I think his name was I Bruce. I remember the, the, the big one, one, right? Yeah, that's trying really hard to not eat. Friends. <laughs> yeah. What they say, fish are friends, not food. <laughs> fish are <laughs> friends, not food. That's right. That's shark bait, <laughs> right? Is it shark fish? No. Oh my god. Shark. I don't know anymore. <laughs> I don't but know either. Sharks are fish too. Sharks are fish. It's true. Yeah. But he says shark shark. <sighs> Friends are, f I don't know. <laughs> Fish are friends, not food. That's a <laughs> <laughs> All right. Papa. Yeah, we should, uh, we should cut that there. This is Smorgasbord. Have a ritual, myth, or something strange you want us to explore? Send us a message through Facebook at Geek Happy Network. Or email us at team at geekhappynetwork.com. We'd love to hear from our fellow Smorgies. This show is created by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Hosted by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Edited by Mick Narciso and Bianca Goico. Logo and graphics by Angel Lynn. Music by Mick Narciso. And videography by Bianca Goico. <laughs>